Visit AnsonPDR.com for the largest selection for just about all your PDR tools, where you'll find hog glue and hog tabs. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech mat, available at most PDR tool distributors. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 234. I almost said 334. I'm your host, Vince D'Alessandro, along with Daniel Grom. We'll have John Renstrom here in a moment. He's having some computer difficulties. And uh, we have an action-packed show for you guys. We have uh, a special guest coming on that's going to talk to us about training. We're trying to keep in the theme of of new technicians lately. Uh, There's been a lot of questions from new technicians talking about training and whatnot. So we figured what better way than pull on a, a trainer that uh, is well versed in that. We've always had Mike in the past, Mike, Mike Toledo. So we, uh, we're pulling on a different guy. But before we do, Daniel, what's going on? How are you, man? <sighs> I'm Dude, good. What, uh, what, what's going on with you? You're, you're very orange. Yeah, I'm, you know what? You went to that Trump rally in in Clearwater, didn't you? I was and you a, came back I, orange. I did. <laughs> part of the... <laughs> part of, Don't you know orange man bad? Well, you know what? Our president's orange. And uh, that was part of going to Clearwater and being in the rally is that you had to come out. Uh, you had to go get a fake tan while you were there. That's it. <laughs> you got a real tan, dude. You look, you're looking good. I got burnt. I didn't get tan. And it's kind of funny. You're, you're normally palely white. Well, this year, especially because I've been so busy moving across the country and doing all the other stuff, I haven't really been out in the sun at all. <laughs> so Florida, you know, the last four months, normally I, I get burned in, in May, right? And here we are in August and I'm getting my first burn and, uh, you know, the summer's over and I'm, I'm burnt and I'm peeling and everything. It's crazy. So you're in Clearwater. Yeah. You had an amazing hotel overlooking just an amazing beach. Yes. I mean, how was it? Was it normal there or what? It was pretty close to normal. It was almost scary normal. Uh, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going, I'm going then. Yeah, it was, uh, just be careful because I, I I gotta tell you, there's not a lot of social distancing going on in some of that stuff. Uh, when you're in a beach community like that and you have to go to the bathroom at the bar, it's like, it it was like a gauntlet walking through there with people with no masks and stuff. It was kind of weird, but you know what I, so far I've, it's what Tuesday and I got in on Sunday. I'm having no symptoms, so I should be all right. I think, hopefully. I, I think I'm I'm good because I used to, as a kid, I used to uh, swim in the Russian River, so I'm pretty pretty much good on everything. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, it was really cool seeing the Trump uh, boat rally that they had going on there. They did break a record, from what I heard. They had 1,700 or 1,800 boats. Yeah. So they they were hoping it. for 15. It's yeah, a lot of boats. It's oh, there's John. Yes, it's a lot of boats. Let me tell you. Uh, and oddly enough, when I took that video, I was just waking up. Obviously, for the ones that have seen it, and uh, I, I meant to have the camera turned the other way towards the boats, but you guys got to see my bed head and my my baggy eyes from hanging out with uh, Kevin Bird and his beautiful <laughs> wife the night before. Uh, you know, you're on vacation, you're sun soaked and you're drinking alcohol and, and you look like hell the next morning. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I look like you do always to me. I don't know. Oh, well, thanks. Dan. <laughs> I appreciate that little bastard. Daniel, can you sit up a little bit? You're not, you're not high. I'm enough. slouching. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, pretty soon he's going to pass out. If he slouches too far, he's going to be all napping over there. Don't bore me then. Exactly. (laughs) uh, Keep me alive. Yeah. But uh, you know what? Florida was cool. Uh, Clearwater is a beautiful beach. If you've ever been there, Uh, it is kind of a European city. There's a lot of Europeans that go there. So Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them uh, weren't social distancing and wearing masks. And that's the part that was a little bit odd. Because, you know, you're watching a street performer and there's 100 people packed in watching. It's like, okay, uh, I'm going to move. <laughs> I'm gonna go back, you know? So that was that was a little bit weird. But uh, And then it gave me a d- different perspective to the Texans because I thought, oh, Texans were kind of lackadaisical about it, but they're really not compared to the Floridians. And I can understand why Florida kind of has high numbers. Yeah, you guys have a – I mean, there's a huge population and then densely packed. Yeah. So, yeah, and you have people coming from all over the world to go on vacation like we did. 
So yeah, I'm just not sure how oh, they got back, in. Back in back into the the world of PDR. Anything going on in the PDR tool world? You get to see it all now, man. You get to see what's going out. What, what tools are people buying? Well, I got to tell you, there. You know, it's kind of neat working at Anson because I do get first look at prototypes and stuff from different companies that they're trying to, you know, sell at Anson and stuff. Uh, I do have to tell you, the new B and D blowout tools are should be out by the time this airs next Tuesday. Uh, you all should hopefully have them by then. I what's, told Mike from what, B&D. What's blowout tools? What? Well, I keep the fender from blowing out? Keep the fender from blowing out. They attach onto your edge pliers or your fender pliers. And, oh, uh, wow. you know, when when you got the, the, the edge of a fender crunched in and you start doing PDR in that body line, the next thing you know, it kinks back out. And yep. sometimes it tears, things like yep. that. This tool is designed for the fender pliers or the edge pliers to jam up in there and squeeze and build that edge up strong enough that you could go in and PDR the rest of it without blowing it out. That's okay. always a big problem. Yeah. Especially, especially on aluminum, man. I mean, it's fine when it's steel, you can, you can deal with it, but aluminum. Yeah. Can be- yeah. I was, I was just talking with the B and D today because <clears throat> I'm getting wicked weather where, you know, it's 60 degrees in the morning and 95 degrees in the afternoon. So Glexo is the black is better in the morning, but I need gray by late afternoon up here. So I've ordered a second head for my little lightweight slide hammer so that I can have one made with black and one made with gray. And then the only thing I have to do is unscrew it and screw the other one in its place. That's a good plan. That is a good plan. That's quite the temperature change between. Actually, actually, I, I think I need to order some high humidity glue, man. It is so weird right now where I'm at. We've, we've had uh, thunder and lightning here, (laughs) high humidity. I mean, it's like Texas weather. Unfortunately, it started a bunch of fires and I'm, we might even get a annoying uh, sound out of my phone because I've been getting fire warnings, evacuation uh, warnings all day. Yeah. yeah. I, I posted a picture of big old plume. There's no wind. So that's the good thing, but big old plume over in Napa Valley over at Lake Berryessa and fires are raging. Ooh. Well, it's not good. you know, th- that goes back to the five uh, or the four seasons of, of, of California, right? So there's <laughs> what drought, uh, uh, you have fires, then you have mudslides, and there's a fourth one, earthquakes. So you're you're right on track. <laughs> earthquakes are fun. Yeah, yeah earthquakes I, are fun. They're not Colorado's got a lot of fires going right now too. Yeah, yeah, they do. So okay, well, all right. What's our show about? Well, we have a special guest. We're keeping, like I said, you weren't here, John, but we're keeping in uh, line with our. Uh, little segments of about training and getting training and being trained. And uh, we thought, actually, I believe it was Hudson Tansy that said, hey, we should get a trainer on other than Mike Toledo. Right? That was me. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. That was Daniel. <laughs> you know what? I'm, you know, I've gotten a couple questions from some, some text messages from guys of lately of who should I go for training? Yes. And, I was like, you know, I, I don't know a lot of other trainers that well. I haven't really delved into that kind of realm in a while. I I used to train a lot, but I didn't enjoy it. So I don't do it. (laughs) Um, So here we are. Well, we brought on the madman of training, the madman of the Midwest. He's not a madman. He's a wonderful man. And uh, (laughs) he's on, he's listening to us right now. So I'd I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, Mike Seawald from Gateway PDR. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Mike. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yes. I'm glad you... Mike Mike is a a fixture at MTE every year. He's always got his booth. um, And he's he's a very familiar face. If if you don't recognize his name, you'll definitely recognize his face because he's there every year. Um, you know, promoting your training, and I've heard nothing but good things about your training. Thanks so much. Now, Mike, uh, how many? You know, there, there's 
there's many questions that we're going to ask you because, uh, you know, we, we actually have a list of questions from another person that we're going to ask you, but how long have you been in the PDR industry? Let's just go back there and start from there. I started in Dents in 93. Wow. And started teaching for Dent Wizard in 95. Well, um, I happened to. 10 years till uh, the end of 04. To 04. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one more time, Mike? You, you cut out just one second. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, uh, I started in Dents in 93, 1993. Uh, I started teaching in 95 for Dent Wizard. Uh, I was an instructor there for just under late 04. 04. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, I got to partake in some of that training that you did back in 95. So that was 25 years ago. Mike Seawald <laughs> was one of my instructors at Dent Wizard. Now, how is that for linking the world together? <laughs> So tell us the truth. Was he's the worst student you've ever had in your entire that's, career? That's, yeah. That's doesn't that's even really remember. Know. Well, he was a uh, You don't even remember him, do you? <laughs> you didn't even remember. Long time. He was just totally I do. <laughs> I do remember. We called him Vinny back then. Yeah. Before he, long -haired before he went kid. by then. <laughs> yes. Yep. Well, at the time, I was the youngest uh, Dent Wizard corporate technician that you guys ever hired. I was 20 years old at the time, and I was a little smart ass. And, uh, you still are. No, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Mike could probably attest to that because I think he has pictures of me that's like uh, taped to a wall or something, right? Uh, <laughs> to the pole, oh, yeah. Can, can I, um, yeah, when we get done with this, can you uh, email those? Uh, please. I can. <laughs> Thank you. I will. All right. So, Mike, you've been training for a long time. Do you have an idea of how many students you have trained? I really don't. Um, I'm going to guess it's several hundred. That's all I can guess, really. Several hundred. Yeah. Um, wow. Maybe participated and helped in really maybe nearly a thousand. Okay. All together with all the the techs at Dent Wizard, yeah, and then uh, and then in my school. Now, when at your school, how many do you train at a time? Do you, do you limit it to a couple? Or? I limit four. Four. Okay. Um, but I feel like it. Uh, you know, I can I can give the exact, in my opinion, the correct amount of time to each technician, and then uh, give them the amount of time for them to work it out. Uh, on their own without me looking over their shoulder. And by the time I get done with technician number four, it's time to revisit number one. So four really seems to work out really well. And now do you, do you do any vetting with people? Cause the, the worst thing about, I think PDR training is when a, a student comes to you and they don't go into it with the right state of mind. And what I mean by that is I've, I used to do this because I was really into it to, to really train somebody to do it right and give them great training, great tools and, you know, lead them on to success. And I found that if they were, oh, I'm going to do this part time or, um, you know, that kind of thing, I, I said, no, I would discourage it. And I tried not to train them. And I told them why, you know, but it was like always a recipe for failure, in my opinion, um, especially if they're a body man, you know, that was a double recipe for failure. Mm -hmm. Well, I do. I turn more away than I take, actually. Uh, and most of the people that I train, they already have a job somewhere. They just need to come and learn how to how to do the repairs. Uh, a lot of them are. Uh, uh, people that I've trained in the past, hiring someone, hiring their son, their nephew, or, you know, hiring uh, technicians. And uh, so they send them to me to train them. They go back home there. And I almost never take someone that doesn't have uh, uh, a mentor to work with them uh, out in the field. You know, occasionally I might take uh, an insurance adjuster that knows all the body shops, knows the ropes, been around, you know, he's chased hail uh, with the insurance companies and he knows, you know, he has contacts. So no, if, if someone 
uh, calls me, wants to join the class, I do ask a lot of questions. And if they don't have that kind of support when they leave, I really don't take them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it, they could be calling you for months. Hey, Mike, well, what do I do now? What do I do now? And, and they don't have anyone to mentor. You know, it, it, it could be problematic for you in, in a sense. Well, and, and I try to keep a good reputation that way because I don't want to pump out a bunch of guys and they fail. Yeah. So I'm looking at uh, success before I even take them. Sure. Yeah. So I want to make sure that there's a good chance that they're going to succeed before they even come. Yeah. Because I don't want to take the money and I don't want to waste their time. Exactly. And uh, how long would you say, uh, how long is your training? It's six weeks. Six weeks. Okay. And six weeks, more, no more than four. I think that's fantastic. That's probably a really good. Yeah. Uh, I would think you probably, do you know the retention? Like, is, is there a good ratio that you know from past students? Is it like one out of well, every three are still doing it or two? Or uh, I keep in touch with most of the guys that have come through my course. And really, if they, if they were serious and they really want to stay with it, almost no one fails. Mm -hmm. uh, the only ones that, that do fail, uh, either they get disinterested and they change their mind or... Um, uh, you know, the, the situation, the work situation didn't work out for them, yeah. but it's really very rare for someone not to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's where the vetting comes in ahead of time. I remember back in the day with the dent wizard, we, we had to get our eyes checked. We had to get a physical, all that stuff before they wow. even hire you. you. You might still do the same thing. I don't know. I do pretty much everything. Except, uh, I do a more rigorous check than they did, but uh, I really don't focus so much on their eyes uh, because I re we really don't have that much of a problem. If if they, uh, you know, have just normal eyesight, we really haven't haven't had problems come up uh, because they haven't had an eye test. Right. Yeah. So I don't really focus so much on that. Sure. Yeah. It, what about age limits? Uh, I don't have an age limit. Actually, a couple of years ago, I trained an, a man, gentleman in his 80s. Wow. Uh, really? <laughs> only reason I took that guy, um, we had sent some guys, uh, some technicians to Gary, Indiana, in a body, small body shop, and the body shop owner contacted me, and he wanted to close his body shop and chase hail. Well, we talked for over a year before I took him, and he said his partner wanted to come, so... Uh, the old gentleman uh, that came with him, he was retired, a retired electrician, a retired uh, police officer, and he hung around in the body shop all the time anyway, and he had plenty of money. And I, when he came, I was shocked when I saw him walk in the door, <laughs> and I turned him away and from me. He said, look, I want to hang out with Terry. I want to go with him, travel, chase hail with him, and I want to be able to fix a dinner or two here or there just to be along. Yeah. So I couldn't really take that opportunity away from that old man. Yeah. And uh, and they do. They they chase hail together. And wow. kudos know, to him, man. He he doesn't really make enough, you know, to pay his own way, but he's having a great time seeing the country and uh, and and getting to hang out with uh, with his buddy. So uh, you know, I made an exception for him. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I've been out of the training game for so long. What what does training cost these days? Uh, I charge twenty four hundred a week, so it's a total of fourteen thousand four hundred. Okay, with okay. tools. I give them about $500 worth of tools. Mm -hmm. uh, I alternate between uh, giving them a Stucky light and a James Lee Elimident light and uh, some dent craft tools and a few A1 tools. Yeah. But okay. they're, they're still going to have to spend 15, 18, you know, close to $2,000 to get started. See, when I it, think I mean, that's to you says they want the, like the, the full Monty package tools. Will you put that together? I, uh, in week four, uh, by week four, they worked with enough tools, uh, where they know what they like, know what they can use. They make a list. They have a wish list that they make. And at the end of week four, we all sit down and I lay out my tools that I chase hail with. And I compare my list to their list and we may add some or take some away. And then they order their tools on their own. So I don't sell tools because I, you know, I feel like I'm a trainer and I don't want to, you know, get into selling tools, but we don't buy any complete sets from any manufacturer. We buy, we piecemeal them together, partial sets. 
I like that. That's yeah, good. and I think yeah. most uh, independent trainers they do that. They they piece them together from because there's so many good tool manufacturers out there, and there's not just one great set. You know, uh, Dentcraft their their company set. You know, I still have some, but I have a bunch that I don't use. So, and you know, whether it's Blem or A1, it's the same thing. I I think we're better off, you know, piecing together. Look in any journeyman's box, and we have everyone's tools. It's not just one brand. Yeah. Right, right. E- you know, each manufacturer has their own strong suit, you know, and PDR Finesse, of course, we we have a certain part of our tools that we get from them. And uh, so, yeah, all of them have their strong suit. So we like to take some of the tools from each of the manufacturers and it seems to work out really, really well. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, so what now we didn't mention where you are located with Gateway PDR Training Center. Where is that located? I'm in Robertsville, Missouri, about 30 minutes west of St. Louis on Highway 44. Okay, so you're in the heart of where, as modern, most modern PDR, as we know it, started. We call that the ground zero, you know? Yeah. Uh, most, That's most, where most techs came from, or most trainers came from, was from that area. Because wasn't that, wasn't that the hub for uh, Dent Wizard back then, back in the day? Still is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you train in fog, right? Or lines, or do you train in both? Uh, I, you know, we have line boards there, uh, but I train with the fog board. Yeah. You use the and good, uh, good, the LED good, good man. <laughs> Hold on. I didn't, I'm sorry. There was too many people talking there. What was that, Mike? Uh, just, we just use the, uh, the fog boards for outside and the, uh, the led lights, uh, inside. Gotcha. Okay. So you use the, the, the line boards for, uh, uh, what can't, I have no comeback or funny line for line boards. I can't, <laughs> I, I have nothing to say about line boards except for, well, I actually, I have a guy in class right now, an advanced technician that was trained on a line board and he compared it to a, a different language. He said, you know, uh, one is English language and the other is Spanish uh, because he's so used to that. See, he's never during a repair. He's never looked at the dent itself. He's just looked at the lines. And in order to find his tip, when he pushes, when two lines pinch together, then he knows approximately where his tip is. But with the fog board, you're actually looking at the dent itself and not the shadows or the lines. Right. And he said first time he's ever actually looked and seen his tip. I'm so glad you said that because that's we've said that many times on the show, and Hudson was probably the first one that I could recall saying that in our group, was that when you're working with lines, you're fixing lines. When you're working with fog, you're fixing metal. And, you know, you know, your lines, you're just making lines straight where you're not really – and I, I'm not going to bag on it because there's plenty of guys out there that, that use line boards and, and do a fantastic job as well. Uh, I, it's just a different language to me as well. I think when you get into bigger dents sometimes though, um, I think it's, it's better sometimes just to see the dent, see the paint sometimes. Cause sometimes, you know, if you're fixing paint and, and then you pull it outside, especially if it's silver or gold, and then all of a sudden you go, Oh, that doesn't look right. Um, because you couldn't see what was going on. Right. Right. We, we really, you know, feel like that, that we need to look at the dent and the imperfections within the dent. You know, a lot of those lines don't show all the imperfections within the dent that you need to clean up while you're bringing it up. Yeah. 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 Now, what, what would you say are some of the most common struggles uh, of new trainees or new technicians that are, are out there? We have a lot of new technicians that listen to our podcast. And uh, what's the common, a couple common ones off the top of your head? Well, once they get over, uh, you know, past uh, being able to read, see the light and see the den, uh, then light placement is a, is a huge issue uh, because really there's a specific place to put that light depending on the depth and the direction of the den. And uh, they have to keep it on the leading edge of that so they can see is because if they leave the, the light towards beginning position too long, then their dent's going to fade away and they're, they're not really going to correctly see it. They're going to make mistakes. And then the, other, the next thing would be, I'd say, cross-check. Yes. Uh, I really struggle getting the guys to cross-check enough. Yeah. 
That's a big deal. You, even even the angle of the light, you know, if I I remember seeing guys early on they they would have the 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 angle too flat and and facing down towards the panel too much and changing that angle changes the perspective of the dent. Um, so all that's really important. It does. It kind of gives you a distorted view. If you're, if, if we really try to, to look flat into the light, uh, instead of having the, the light tilted down, you know, or the board, whichever we're working with. Uh, so I try to keep them from tilting it down too much because it does distort the view and, and angled sideways does the same thing. Now, uh, for our listeners that don't understand what we're saying about cross-check, it's literally taking your board and putting it on the opposite side and checking it from the, the opposite angle or setting it up horizontally and checking it as well horizontally. So that's I have a, a technician that I was working with. He was a 15-year technician, and he's like, Vince, how come when I walk back to my truck, I could still see the dent? I go, because you're not cross-checking your work. You know, it was, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what you're a 15 year technician? You should be always cross checking your work. And, uh, you know, it, he didn't know it, what cross checking was. Ooh. No. Well, oh. he, he didn't know that it was called cross checking. And okay. he wasn't doing it, obviously, because he could still see, you know, something left in his dent. Yeah. I, I, at this stage, when I set up my light, on my hood sitting on a hood stand i set them up into a b so that i can cross check as i'm fixing the dent i i fix into one light and then i step across and then i fix into the other light and i don't have to move anything but but my body and it uh it sped me up a lot on my hoods by having that b and one of the things i'll say to guys you know even so let's say you're working on the front of a door and you can't work you can't cross check it and work from the other angle because you're at the front of the door. You still should cross check to tap down your dent. You should at least do that. You should always be cross checking. Even if you can't work on it in that other angle, you should be at least, you know, um, blending or tapping down. Yeah. Right, Mike. Exactly. I agree a hundred percent. And we do that. Yeah. Um, with you know the new guys really they don't understand the importance of that but that's exactly what we do if they can't work a certain direction at least they can bring it just a little bit high and then they can tap it down any direction yeah. and one of the, the best cross checks sometimes is putting the the light up high and laying down on the ground and looking up at the ceiling and cross checking that way and you'd be going oh my god that dent's still there <laughs> You know, another one that uh, that's really tough on doors when you step back like 10 or 15 feet and you still see that little wiggle, uh, turn your light straight towards the fender and then use the reflection on the fender to look at the door. There you go. And it, it, it bleeds that up and just shows you all the detail in that little imperfection. Yeah. Very good. Yep. Well, all right. Uh, let's see. Ah, what's the most com common mistakes trainees make? I know all my mistakes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is the most common training mistake you see that's kind of universal for everybody? Uh, I'd say they push too hard. <laughs> um, that's one. Uh, okay. You know, there's there's so many of them. They, they really are. Uh, but I'd say push too hard. Is that is that um, also called the they, frustrating push? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When they get yeah. frustrated, they get overpushed because they're like, oh, I'm yeah. dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, um, what's the next question? What are some great uh, advanced tools uh, that you like working with? Well, we like working with some of the sharper tip tools. Uh, for some of the other dents. And, you know, the, uh, glue pulling has come a long way these days. It really has. Those guys are doing some amazing things with glue. And we're not really keeping up with, with all the advanced stuff that the, they're doing. But, uh, you know, we, we start with glue pulling rails and doing the smaller stuff. But, uh, you know, there's so many tools out there that are doing so many uh unbelievable things. I try to just introduce them to some of this advanced stuff. And then, you know, it's up to them to later on, 
uh, because, you know, just in six weeks, we can't cover everything, but, but we do try to touch on some of that stuff. Now, Mike, do you, do you introduce glue pulling earlier on in, in the training now than compared to week before? three, week three? Yeah. See? Yes. Huh. And, and to think, yeah, because if they, if they get a taste of uh, glue pulling, that's all they'll want to do. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I make them write this down. You know, we have written lectures, uh, uh, that they do. And I have a lot of unwritten lectures that I have them write down, but, uh, I always stand firm on, I tell them if they can get it, if they can get a tool on it, they should in the beginning while they're new, if they can get a tool on a dent, they should push it out, not glue pull it. Uh, and then later on, then they can, you know, make the decision, which would be the best yeah. depending now, on what kind of they have. So how about, uh, size of dents? What do you, what do you go up to? Are you going up to some larger stuff? Uh, on our website, we have some pictures of some dents that are probably two feet across, um, you know, so they, they need to know uh, where to pull, whether they're or pull or push. Uh, so a lot of time, you know, we have what, what we call um, our pizza lecture. We name it after somebody else's lecture, but ours is way different. So we have them start in either the hardest metal or the ugliest or the steepest, uh, and then they improve improve that part of the den. So uh, we do some really big, I jump, I, uh, the last one I did, I got up on the hood and jumped on it okay. and caved it in. And uh, we all worked on it together and they got it looking pretty good. So really I, I try to get them over that fear, you know, um, and, and I try to get the hail technicians over the fear of that because I try to cross train these guys and uh, you know, because a hail tech during the off season, they see a big, basketball sized den and they could make some money, but they pass on it. They leave money on the table. Yeah. So I get them over that in class. And then on the other side of that, the route technicians that have never done a hail car, they're overwhelmed when they see a car with a thousand <laughs> dents in it. So I try to snag a hail car too. And I've even bought one that, that I simulate hail in to get them over the fear of their hail. So, you know, when they, because it hails everywhere and if they get a hail car in their area, then they're not so scared of it. Yeah, at least crosses your path no matter where you live. Yeah. So that kind of leads me into my next question then. You said, you know, you've uh, acquired a hail car or you'll you'll buy cars. What Are you always fixing whole cars or are you acquiring panels, have them set up on stands? Well, we have hoods. Uh, we start on hoods, on hood stands. And when they get good enough to where they can bring these dents up clean, uh, I don't actually get them on actual, and we do customer cars also. We do actual hail cars in class in week five and week six. Okay. Uh, but before before that, uh, in week four, if, if, if they're doing good enough, I'll put them on my car, the one that I bought just for class and uh and prepare them for a real car because i've learned throughout the years that if they haven't worked on a real customer car in class they they kind of freeze up whenever they get out there they seem to to be really scared of their first real car and and if these cars are paying cars of course the the, the technicians in class actually they get the money i don't take the money for for the hail cars that we do in class i divide it up among them and that helps get them pumped up you know if they can pocket a thousand dollars each or, you know, even a hundred dollars. Uh, several of them put that hundred dollars in there in the frame with their certificate. So they, they feel like that they've accomplished that and they're really not so scared of a real car whenever they get out there. Yeah. That, All right. That's very cool. What, right a, what a great angle. I mean, you know, cause, and you've had to learn so many tips and tricks throughout the years. I, I'd love to sit here and pick your brain all night long and all week long. And, and I mean, you've been training for 25 years. I, 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 I've been a technician for 25 years. You were there when I was there. You were my trainer, one of them. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it, you got to know a lot. You got to know a lot about uh, the human the human element of it. You know, there's such a human element to PDR. I mean, it's an art. It's, it's a craft. It, and not everyone gets it, but there's a f quite a few that do. You know, um, I really do enjoy what, what I do because, uh, you know, I play a small part helping these guys get started, you know, in their new career. Uh, and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a group decision with their family. You know, if they have wife and kids, you know, they've got something invested. So, uh, you know, in class, I do take it really, really serious. And then I really like talking to guys like you, 
you know, you're successful. I remember when you were a scared kid yeah. uh, going through class and now to see you uh, where you're at and what you're doing. I mean, you know, that's a pretty good feeling that I feel like I knew you back when you started and had a small part in helping you, you know, get jump started. Yeah. So I really love what I do. It's great. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the hell out of you, Mike, honestly. Uh, you, you were very influential yeah. on, on my young mind. Uh, do you do you do any uh, cold glue training? You know, I just bought recently bought some cold glue and I'm learning how to use it myself. Oh, man. So we're kind of doing some trial and error and uh, and we're learning with it right now. But I'm not an expert on it at all. <laughs> Yeah, uh, John's becoming an expert with it. <laughs> yeah, we're getting pretty John? pretty wild with it. I'm, I'm starting to have a collection of slide hammers just for different weights, uh, uh, just for different dents, uh, using different temperatures for different times of day. Uh, amazing. Uh, it we find ourselves bidding worse and worse rails until we have to talk ourselves out of it because we're like, well, we can collect. So at least a third of that. And it, and then it gets it down to a reasonable number to fix out. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a blast. We're customizing some tools specifically for Glexo. And yeah, it's, it's got us excited about doing really, really whipped hard rails. Now, the uh, other area that I'd say, uh, uh, look at is when you're doing some bigger dance and you think you got your den all good and then you stand back 30 or 20 feet and you look at it and you still see that low and you worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and you're afraid to go back and work it more you take that glesco and and hit it on there and pull it you get that little low out uh, without doing any damage and yeah. that's where it comes valuable it comes valuable well, that's a good tip. Thanks. We're going to try it. We'll try it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the wonderful thing. How many how many industries are out there that you have people that you know are open and willing to help out each other nowadays? You know, if you remember 15, 20 years ago, no one was talking to each other. You know, we didn't we didn't share tips, tricks, or ideas or anything like that. And now, you know, with with the advent of MTE, we all get to know each other. We know that. You know, they're really not competition. We're friends, and we could help each other out. And that's, you know, how this podcast was basically born. You know, I really appreciate what you guys are doing, too. You guys are helping the industry out a lot. Uh, and But I do hear from a lot of, like you're saying, a lot of the newer guys, whenever they get on a job and they're working with even technicians that they don't even know, they're overwhelmed with people helping them. Uh, you know, they can't even remember all the information that they get because they get so much help and it's not like like you were talking about back in the day everyone felt like uh that we were their competitors and they didn't even like to talk to us so yeah it's it's changed a lot yeah and you guys are helped changing that by these kind of things well we hope we're doing our part <laughs> let me let me ask you this mike um i recently got a call from a a, a new new guy and he's self-taught he's been watching videos and he called me, asked me about a specific problem. And I'm like, I started, I didn't know at first what, where he was going. And then I was like, okay, I got to dive in, ask him some questions, find out that he was self-taught. And I was like, well, that's your, that's your main problem is you need to get in front of a trainer. And he was like, nope, I'm not doing that. And I was like, then you're going to have this problem for a long time <laughs> is, is what I was thinking in my mind, uh, honestly. And um, how do you feel about that? Well, I have a lot to say about that. I, I, I agree with you 100 percent. You know, I, that's why I feel lucky in the position that I'm in, because, you know, over the years, I've kept uh, in touch with nearly 2000 technicians and I pick their brain and they call me and tell, you know, give me the new information and a guy on his own can't live long enough to have all these experiences and to learn all this on his own. He just can't do it. So he, you know, he really needs to, uh, he, and, and the reason apparently that he's not wanting to get trained is because he really doesn't understand the whole world out there, the whole world of PDR that he's missing out on. Yeah. So yeah, he, one person, you, you can't possibly learn this on your own. And there's no sense, in my opinion, going through all the stumbling blocks 
that we did, you know, they need to take advice from, you know, experienced technicians and trainers to get past all that. There's, there's really no point in making all the same mistakes that we made. There's too many details. I, yeah, I, I would have never been the tech that I'm, that I am if I wasn't mentoring with somebody, you know, yeah. somebody to, to more boost you along, dude, you're on the right track, man. Just keep it up. You're doing good. Keep going. You're, you're doing it right because you start really questioning yourself when you're in one of those really bad dents and it's looking uglier and uglier and it gets ugly before it gets better. Yeah. And that just having that, that support really means a lot. Oh, no. yeah. Uh, the, the mentor in the field is as important, sometimes more important than their basic training in class. Uh, and that's why I pretty much won't take someone if they don't have that support because they're not going to get anywhere. They're, they're really not. Yeah. So now, you're, you're right about it. Now we're, we're running out of time a little bit here, Mike, but uh, you know, this is a, a common question that gets asked quite, quite often. You know, and you see people online on Facebook. You you probably don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. We, we kind of do, and uh, there's there's always this common thing. Oh, there's too many PDR technicians in the world. You know, there's there's you know guys are screwing it up. All the trainers are training people, and there's too many of us already. They're driving the prices down. <laughs> we all know that's bullshit. But uh, what, what's your take on that? <laughs> You know, the, the, from my experience, now I don't know about other, other schools or other trainers, but the guys that come to me are going to get trained somewhere, whether it's with me or, or another instructor or on their own. They're going to enter our, our industry. And, uh, you know, that's been a, a, a bone of contention ever since 93, right. you know, or we flood the market. Well, you know, I think all you guys can see uh, during a busy year, we run out of technicians. Mm -hmm. uh, through the course of a normal year, uh, I don't see a problem there. But, uh, you know, if, if a guy's going to spend that kind of money and quit his job and, and come for six weeks, uh, you know, he's, he's serious about and he's going to get in it anyway. And I'd much rather have him properly trained than, uh, you know, than just to learn in his backyard like, like the one, you know, the guy that John was talking about learn on his own. But I don't see it uh, – uh, being flooded, you know, it, 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 I, I really don't see that because, yeah. you know, here in St. Louis, I have, I have a route, I have accounts, I have body shops and, uh, during a busy year, I can't get tax and I've got a big list of technicians and there's times where I have to let a body shop go and, and, and go ahead and, and do conventional repair because I can't find the tax to staff it. Yeah. So I really don't think that our market's flooded. I, I, I haven't seen it. But, you know, sometimes I don't get out much. It could be other places, but not in St. Louis. Yeah. I, I personally think, and some would agree, that we're, we're kind of like teenagers in our, in our industry. We're, not, we're, not, we're past the baby steps. You know, we're, we're kind of teenagers. We're coming into our, our adulthood. And, you know, body shops take us seriously now. Uh, insurance companies take us seriously. All these different industries are now, we're not just that gypsy on the side of the road saying, oh, those guys, they're going to screw up your car. You know, there's plenty of guys out there that do that, but for the most part, we're like we're, we're coming up very well, and there's plenty of work out there for everyone. Yep, definitely. But you know, I I, I like to say I like I'm I'm so encouraged to see you doing everything right, and um, you know, I encourage any new guys out there listening to this, you know, find the right trainer. Uh, whether it be Mike or somebody else, um, you know, training is so important. Tools are so important. Do it right. Come right. into it right. Um, you know, the, the one thing I always said to my, my trainees is you got to fall out of the nest and fly. So, you know, the reason I became successful is because I quit my job and I had no other option. I was, I had to learn how to do this and, there was no going back to anything else. Um, and that's the best attitude I, I could give advice to, to a new guy. What about you, Vince? Well, yeah, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I just, I think that the, 
the new guy, we need the new guy. We learn from the new guy. The old guys learn from the new guys. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, it's it's the circle of life and dent removal. Yeah. And you know, Vince is, is, is going into his retirement stage of, <laughs> of dent removal. When's the last time you touched a car? I've worked on a hail car with Craig Dyer today. We flew through it in about 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. We, there was about 75 dents in the whole car, and we literally it, and right you remember next to each how, other. How to do it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> they were little. They little were little. Dance. They were. But it was a Hyundai, and it was repainted twice and with Bondo everywhere. Oh, 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 so, oh, oh, that's we, always fun. We got it done. <laughs> we, we just rode a Nissan Armada that matches that white Chevy that I posted all that stuff about. Oh, Ooh. wonderful. We'll be looking for, so, uh, forward to that estimate. We'll see. You. That one's going through a collision center, so we might not touch it much of it. Was that a roof that you posted? Uh, on the golf ball shot? Yeah. Yes. That, it that. seems like a roof that you posted that was hammered pretty good. Um, yeah, we did the, the golf ball shot was uh, on the roof of a Grand Cherokee, and then the white Chevy pickup that I did. Yeah, that was a complete, the hood, the roof, the whole truck. That one was a monster truck. Yeah. It was a monster truck? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when we come to the end here, anybody have any closing thoughts? Uh, well, you know what? I'm just happy that we have guys like Mike Seawald in our industry. You know, Doing it right. Pun- punching out the good technicians and not the turds. Yeah. 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 I just want to say thanks for coming on, Mike. I, uh, I mean, I've talked with you several times at MTE and, uh, I think it was great that we finally were able to get you on the show. Well, thanks so much, John. I appreciate the kind words. And I, so where can, where can guys find you? Where's your website and all that kind of good. Info? Uh, it's gatewaypdrtraining.com. And they can find out pretty much anything they need to know there. And if they have any more questions, they can call me at 314-775-9904. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming on, Mike. We really enjoyed talking to you. And uh, good luck to you. Just hang out for a second. We're going to close out the show. And uh, Daniel, what the hell do you got to say? Guys, level up your training and level up those tools. Don't do stupid stuff and keep those dents stiff. Thanks for listening. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the industry and tool related news every week. Mobile Tech RX, the app that helps you make more money. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech map, available at most PDR tool distributors.